Hey guys, Fabio here once again, continuing with my uh, Halloween series of reviews, trying to wrap them up tonight. Next, I'm going to review Halloween H2O, the curse, or yeah, the curse. <laughs> Halloween H2O, 20 years later, where Jamie Lee Curtis comes back into the fold, and a great sequel, in my opinion, a great Halloween sequel. Uh, definitely one of the best, it's right up there, you know, with uh, 4 and Halloween 2, in my opinion. And just, it was great to, you know, see Jamie Lee come back to her roots, to where she started, and pay tribute to both the film series and the horror genre in general. And uh, Halloween 2, or Halloween H2O, excuse me, uh, 20 years later, takes place 20 years after the original, and uh, Laurie Strode is now known as Carrie Tate. She's this headmistress at a very, you know, uh, elite private school, and, you know, in the hills of southern or in the hills of california you know very secluded um you know she has a son john played by josh harnett in his first movie um you know and you know she's still trying to escape the nightmare of michael myers and stuff like that you know she just hasn't come to terms with it you know it haunts her in her every waking moment and stuff like that and she's letting it unfortunately affect her son you know but, you know, all of that has to come full circle because Michael's back to celebrate, you know, the anniversary with his sister. And Jamie Lee and, well, Laurie Strode is unfortunately thrown into the fire one more time. But this time she's going to make sure it's the final battle with Michael Myers. And that's the plot in a nutshell. I mean, I think everybody knows the plot of Halloween H2O. You know, blood is thicker than water. That was one of the uh, taglines they had used. And, uh, I mean, once again, this is just a great sequel, a great Halloween movie. You know, after Mike, uh, Curse of Michael Myers had come out, you know, the uh, people just weren't, I guess, ready for it, you know. But also because of, you know, the backstory behind the movie and the, you know, the re-editing, the severe re-editing of the film, which I talked about, you know, extensively in the reviews of the both versions. Um, but the slasher film genre would actually be restarted the, the year after Curse of Michael Myers came out. In 1996, we got Scream, which restarted the slasher craze. Um, because if you look at it, the 90s weren't really big with a big slasher genre. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Freddy's Dead had come out in 91. Jason Goes to Hell came out in 93. New Nightmare came out in 94. And then Curse of Michael Myers came out in 95. So... I mean, if you think about it, there wasn't really any big slasher films in the early 90s, early to mid 90s. So then Scream, you know, reinvented the genre and opened the door for this movie. Um, which Kevin Williamson, who has wrote Scream, I think he did write some of this or he wrote a draft. I know, I think he did some uncredited rewrites and stuff like that. I know he had worked on this film in some capacity. But, you know... Uh, Jamie Lee had said, you know, someone had mentioned to her that 98 would be 20 years later. And she was like, wow, really? It's been 20 years? And she actually called John Carpenter. She's like, hey, you know, you want to do a Halloween 20, you know, 20 year anniversary movie? And he just, he politely declined. He's like, you know, Jamie, that's a great idea. You know, if you want to go for it, you know, do it. You know, I'm not really looking to do that right now. And she's like, okay, you know, but they ended up doing it. You know, Dimension films that still own the rights, so, you know, they got a script together, you know, they got Jamie Lee back, and, you know, they did the movie. The movie's actually directed by Steve Miner, uh, the guy who directed Friday the 13th 2 and 3. Uh, I think he also directed House, a movie that um, I had not seen. Uh, might check him out someday, I don't know yet, but, you know, guy's definitely well-rounded in the horror genre, obviously. Um, so, I mean, that was great to have him, you know, direct this. But, you know, I just love the fact that Jamie Lee Curtis came back. You know, one of the things that made the first two movies. You know, it's just awesome to have her back. You know, a great actress, in my opinion. You know, just, it was awesome to have her back. I love the score. The score is very, well, it's very orchestral. Previous Halloween movies were not orchestral. They were basically the piano, a few other instruments played by the same guy. You know, this is orchestral. It's very uh, sweeping, very moving. It's got a hint of Friday the 13th in it. In a couple of the score tracks, you'll hear a little bit of Friday the 13th type music. So that's pretty cool to hear. That's just my opinion. Good special effects. Um, Nick, Greg Nicotero uh, working on this. I know a lot of people know 
that, you know, they use like five different masks in the movie. Uh, you know, they really did it. Then they had a really crappy looking CGI mask. So that's one of the things the movie is infamous for. But it doesn't distract for me too much. And you know, I really don't care about that kind of thing. I don't look at that. You know, but I do like, you know, the, the mask they use except that crappy CGI one. But, you know, what can you do, right? But, you know, the movie is very simplistic. You know, it goes back to the roots. It goes back to, you know, the original uh, concept of the Halloween movies, the first two. Well, you know, four and yeah, yeah, one, two, one, one, two, and four. I guess it goes back to those basic roots. Yeah, so that's great. You know, Mustafa Akkad, once again, you know, executive producer. You know, so you know he's back as well. So that's always a good thing. Um, I love the characters, you know, once again, Jamie Lee is back as Laurie Strode. What's not to love, you know? She's been haunted and plagued by the memories of the, that awful night 20 years ago, and now she has to come to terms with it and fight that monster one more time. Um, you know, once again, Josh Harnett in his first movie, an actor who would go on to be in Pearl Harbor, you know, a lot of movies, you know, definitely a recognizable actor. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who, another actor who has gone very far in his career, was in G.I. Joe, Inception, he's supposed to be in The Dark Knight Rises, uh, got his start doing Angels in the Outfield for Disney. So, you know, that's you know, come a long way. You know, he has a small role. Uh, Michelle Williams, you know, uh, Heath Ledger's girlfriend, um, you know, she was on Dawson's Creek, she's been a lot of stuff too, you know, she plays the girlfriend. She's a hot tamale, I don't care what anybody says. Same with uh, Jodie Lynn O'Keefe. She plays one of the other girls. She's another little hot tamale, you know. Hmm. Jamie Lee looks good, too. She still looks good after 20 years, so I don't care. <laughs> uh, Adam Han Bird, who was in uh, Jumanji, he's in this. Uh, LL Cool J. I love LL Cool J. I love him in this movie. He's the man. I don't care. LL Cool J is the shit. Uh, and Janet Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis's mom, is in this movie, the original Scream Queen, because she was in Psycho in the shower scene, so she's definitely the original Scream Queen. Uh, also, Adam Arkin plays the, uh, the guidance counselor and uh, Laurie Strode's boyfriend. Can't remember what else he's been in. I know he's been in other stuff. Can't remember what he's been in, though. But anyway, good cast, you know. Once again, that... That small cast that, you know, the original films had, you know, that's back. That's always a great thing. Um, a lot of great scenes in this. I love the opening scene where, once again, uh, the nurse from the original film is back. Uh, Nancy Stevens comes back. I love the scene where, you know, her house has been broken into. You know, they messed up your office pretty good. And we see that the Laurie Strode file has everything missing. And we already know what's up. We know somebody's back. And I love that. That moment where Michael Myers just, you just see him for the first time. And it's like, yes, he's back. You know, it's awesome. Um, you know, when he kills the the kid with the, Joseph Gordon-Levitt with the, the hockey, or the, yeah, the hockey skate. That was a cool kill. And he stabs the guy in the back and he, the body falls through the door. You know, and I like when they're chasing through the house and stuff. That's a great sequence. The opening credits is pretty cool too. I like the way that they did the credits. I don't like the fact how they just didn't use Donald Pleasant's voice from the previous movies for the dialogue, but whatever, you know, whatever. I love Laurie's little nightmare sequence, you know, where it establishes the fact that she's still haunted by the memory of Michael Myers. I love the sequence in the rest area where, you know, the little girl and her mom are using the bathroom and Michael Myers comes in, you know, that's a really scary sequence. The cafe sequence where Laurie is trying to come to terms with everything. You know, it's just a great acting sequence. You know, great dialogue and stuff like that. You know, and then, you know, Mom, Michael Myers is dead, you know. I love the relationship that both, or that Laurie has with her son, John. I love that, how, like, you know, she went through this horrible experience. And, you know, she's just trying to protect him. But she's very overbearing. Because she doesn't want anything like that to happen to him. But you kind of feel for it. You know, you understand that situation and stuff like that. Because, you know, we've watched these movies over and over and stuff. But, you know, it is, you know, a really great sequence. You know, Mom, Michael Myers is dead, you know. You want to 
stay handcuffed to your dead brother, that's fine. But I'm not dragging myself down with you. you know, great sequence. Um, I love the homage to the original film where they're talking about fate in the classroom. And, you know, uh, Molly, the Michelle Williams character, looks out and sees Michael Myers in the courtyard. It's a great sequence. I love... Um, I love that, and then, you know, she's explaining fate, and then Laurie's kind of sitting there listening to it, and that's kind of setting up for the rest of the movie, if you pay attention, you know. The, uh, I love the scene between Jamie Lee and Janet Lee, you know, mom and daughter, the original Scream Queen and the successor, you know. Oh, it's Halloween, I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare. That's yeah, just a, a cool sequence to see them together, you know, that's really awesome to see, so that's really cool. I love when Michael Myers sneaks in, you know, because he parks the car and the gates open and he comes in and he's looking in the window and he's banging on the window. I mean, that's a pretty scary sequence. It's pretty cool. I love when he's walking down the uh, the path at the school and Laurie keeps closing her eyes to think, you know, to get rid of him, but he's not going away. And then her boyfriend shows up and then she leaves and her boyfriend sees Michael Myers is like, well, that wasn't a dream. That was real, you know, and that's pretty cool. Um, the finale is great where, you know, Laurie explains to her boyfriend who she really is and stuff like that. And, you know, they find out that, you know, her son is still at the school because all the kids at the school went on a vacation for the weekend. So, you know, him and his girlfriend and the other kids are there. I love when the, uh, well, you don't see the one guy's death. He's just sitting there with his throat cut. But when he kills Jody Lynn O'Keefe's character, I love that when he stabs her in the leg and then she's going up the elevator and he cuts the, the line and it comes down and it goes right on her leg and it breaks her leg. That's, oh, you cringe. But great special effects. And, uh, you know, she gets out and she's like, you know, dragging you know, herself, and then, you know, he kills her, and, and then he hangs her up on the light, and, you know, they turn the light on, and the sparks and stuff are coming down. That's a great sequence, in my opinion. Once again, Greg Nicotero, um, I'm pretty sure, I know he worked on part of the movie, so I'm pretty sure he did all that. Um, and then the chase sequence where, you know, they, they chase, or he chases, uh, John and Molly into the little like gate and they're stuck and he's sticking the knife in and she dropped the key so he picks up the key and um, you know starts turning the key to open the, the gate and then you know Laurie closes the door and there's that face to face moment which is great you know that's a great um, sequence and then you know when he lifts up when Michael kills the boyfriend and he lifts him up and then you know Laurie and you know she gets the kids out and I love that when she she has the axe and you know she cuts the power to the gate Michael you know she she kind of realizes at that moment that you know she's got to stop it you know this is you know she's she's got to face her fear and that's a great moment I love when he comes down from the the top and you know she hits him with the axe and he just rips the axe out and throws it into the ground that's great um you know the sequence where they're in the the mess hall of the, or the cafeteria rather, of the, the school, and he's flipping the desks over. Chris Durand, who played Michael Myers in this, I met him. Uh, he said that was his favorite part of the movie, doing that. I said, yeah, that's a great scene, you know. Which originally they were going to do in Halloween 4, but they didn't have time. So and I love that. And, she, and when she takes out the knife drawer and she's throwing the knives at him, and the one goes in the wall, and then, you know, he stabs through the thing, and, you know, she starts stabbing him, and he falls over the balcony. You think he's dead? Load him in. You know, then she, you know she puts the body in, and that's great. You know, when he's getting out of the car, and you know she hits him, and you know he's stuck to the tree. You know, and Michael, you know, sticks his hand out, and then just boom, that's it. To me, like, cause I know with Halloween Resurrection they did that shit where oh it's a paramedic. Also heard a rumor that Mustafa Akkad had told people that. It wasn't actually Michael Myers, it was the copycat, but I think that's just a rumor. But to me, this is Michael Myers, and this is the end of the Halloween series. Um, I know this is going to be a little short, and kind of run out of space on the camera here. I wanted to get these up, but uh, Halloween H2O, a great sequel, definitely worth your time if you haven't seen it, not only for Halloween, but for Jamie Lee Curtis. So, uh, you know, a great flick. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
and uh, take care. Because next I'm going to review or do a rant, another rant on Halloween Resurrection and Halloween the Rob Zombie remake. So hope you guys enjoy that.